Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and they put out a new promo for XRP Las Vegas. It's coming. It's going to be May uh, 3rd to May 4th, I believe. The countdown continues to XRP Las Vegas 2024, May 3rd and 4th. Get ready for a great weekend with the XRP community. Learn about Uphold's suite of services. Learn about crypto IRAs from iTrust Capital. Hear from Link2 and learn about what companies are ready for takeoff on the IPO runway. Limited tickets still available for the Future of Digital Assets Benefit Dinner featuring Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, Attorney John Deaton, Chris Giancarlo, Digital Dollar Project, Michael Arrington, Arrington Capital, and Eleanor Tarrant, Fox Business. Get your tickets to XRP Las Vegas 2024 now. Don't May 3rd, May miss 4th. out. All right, if you're in my DAIXRP.com group, there's a discount in there. Um, if you uh, otherwise, I've got all the links in the description of this video. Look at this, another day, another huge inflow into Bitcoin ETFs led by iBit. Here's the flow of funds. Um, where's the, I don't see BlackRock on this list. No, they're the iShares, that's right. But yeah, so the, the funds are coming in and crazy Michael Saylor is very excited right now. Welcome back to Overtime. Bitcoin surged to its highest level in more than two years today after it broke past the $50,000 mark. But joining me now to discuss is MicroStrategy's executive chairman and co-founder, Michael Saylor. Michael, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Morgan. Uh, so MicroStrategy had a very strong day, finishing the day up more than 11%. You're up 46% in the past week as well. I think this is your first time joining us since we saw these Bitcoin spot ETFs began trading. Initially, we saw shares of MicroStrategy sell off, but now... Since January 11th, uh, MicroStrategy is outperforming all of those ETFs. Walk me through your outlook for Bitcoin and then we'll jump into earnings. You know, I think a lot of this is just indicative of the popularity of Bitcoin as an asset class. It's, it's now the world's most popular investment asset. It's novel, it's digital, it's global, it doesn't do it's anything. unique. And it's uncorrelated to traditional risk assets because it doesn't come with exposure to any given country, currency, company, quarterly result, product cycle, competitor, not to weather, not to war, not to an employee base or supply chain. And so that makes it a natural addition to the portfolio of a responsible investor. There's 10 years of pent up demand. People have been waiting for these ETFs. and. And finally, uh, mainstream investors are able to access Bitcoin. And I think that's what's driving the surge of capital in the asset class. And initially there was a rebalancing as people were moving capital between the futures market and the miners and MicroStrategy and the ETFs. But following that rebalancing, I think uh, the, uh, the assets found its footing. And now people are beginning to realize that there's 10 times as much demand for Bitcoin coming in through these ETFs as there is supply coming from the natural sellers who are the miners. Yeah, and of course we're gonna get the have, having event, which I imagine will uh, you know, sort of shift some of those supply demand dynamics coming into the spring as well. Earnings last week, you rebranded the company or announced the rebranding of the company as a Bitcoin development company. What does that mean? Well, it's a natural decision for us given the success of our Bitcoin I strategy. Nothing but but buys Bitcoin? Our unique status as the world's largest public company holder of Bitcoin. MicroStrategy is an operating company that can actively manage its capital structure and its business operations with more flexibility than- Let me tell you what, folks. This man right here, he, he's gonna, he, he's, his uh, story ends one of two ways and there's no in between. This man, is either going to be one of the wealthiest people in the world and he's going to be a rock star hero or you see that ship behind him 
he is going to go nuts and break that ship into a thousand pieces and be the laughing stock of the world. It's going to be one or the other. This is part of the, the point I've always made about Bitcoin is there's one or two things going on here, folks. Either all of these, because these people are not dumb. Either all of these people know who Satoshi is, which is what I think, most of them. The, the people, the major talking heads, the people that are really behind pushing it. Either, because we know Homeland Security knows who the four Satoshis are. Now, what are the repercussions? If Michael Saylor knows who created Bitcoin, does that, does that equate to like inside information? I mean, it would certainly, the SEC would view it as a crime if a lot of these people knew who Satoshi was and had a knowledge that the rest of the investing public did not have. Surely that would be a major, major scandal. Which leads me to, it's either that or they're taking the risk of not knowing. I just don't believe that they would. Would his board allow him to buy Bitcoin without knowing who Satoshi is? This doesn't make sense. And anything, the Bitcoin Ethereum thing, which are inferior big time to XRP, XLM, and many others, it's never made any sense to me. Still doesn't make sense. Which makes me think that there's a bigger plan going on but this guy is going to be a hero or a zero, nowhere in the middle. And, and, and if he's a hero, it's just because it's a rigged game. And he was in on the rigging. <laughs> I mean, that's, the, that's the, the bad part about it. Just like with Ethereum. If Ethereum's a winner, it's because the, peop, uh, the people were left alone that were inside of the rigged game. The Joseph Lubins and the Vitalik Buterins and the people at the SEC. We've proven it all. If they win, it's because criminality was allowed. Just in $1.5 trillion in asset manager Franklin Templeton files for spot Ethereum ETF. And I had a couple of questions. Well, I think I asked them here. I wonder if and how Franklin Templeton is protecting themselves from the potential lawsuits that could come from ETHGATE if it affects the the ETF price. In other words, when ETHGATE gets exposed, and it is going to be exposed in documentary form, there's a lot of liability for someone who did not, who, who ignored all of that and, and, and put out an Ethereum ETF and told people to invest in it. And here's uh, this guy right here. I've called him out several times because he is a, he's, I think he's at Bloomberg. And he, he's fully aware of ETHGATE because he's been in some of the spaces. He's ignoring the whole topic and continuing to push all of these ETFs and all this stuff and, and trying to pretend like he doesn't know about it. But I'm putting it right in his face. His name, by the way, is James Seifert. Or, are there any ETHGATE corruption disclaimers in the filings? Because you've been made fully aware of them and you're out here pushing them. Then... Shady Lubin shows up, sticks his head out of the hole yesterday. It may be the case that uh, uh, that um, the threat of AI um, wakes uh, the White House up. So the executive branch has been trying to kill crypto or slow crypto. And uh, fortunately, the judicial branch has, uh, has been helping us out. Um, Do you hear what he just said? Fortunately, the judicial branch has been helping us out. This is the same guy that in 2018 was saying that the SEC, rightfully so, is going to go after all these crypto businesses and they're going to enforce securities laws because he knew he had a free pass. And now he's trying to flip and act like he's on the side of the people that are winning the lawsuits. He thought he had a monopoly. And nobody's calling this guy out. He thought he had a monopoly. He thought he... he he was on the side of the Gary Gitzlers and the Jay Claytons and the current administration. Now he's trying to act like he's on the side of crypto. He was not. So AI could drive um, growth uh, of our ecosystem. Um, also, as I'm sure we've heard many times today, uh, the, the spot Bitcoin and then Ether ETFs, I think are, are going to draw in so much activity 
and so much value uh, that the executive branch is not going to be able to um, to continue on its path. Okay, now that you've heard his lies, now let's hear a My little a little bit to, of the uh, truth. This is about the Ripple victory. These are some, I guess, some attorneys that are on a panel. So I would say with a more U.S. Uh, focused view, um, I think that unfortunately this year has had a lot of very negative uh, developments, um, specifically with various cases being brought and um, regulators asserting that effectively every cryptocurrency uh, is a security in the U.S. Um, I think that the things that have been happening in courts have been some positive developments. For example, the Ripple decision, very, very positive in helping to bring clarity. And I think it has become absolutely critical that we get clarity on this issue. And so another very important um, update was uh, the market structure bill uh, passing out of the House Financial Services Committee. Not actually law yet and a long way to go, but still I think could be very impactful. You know, I would actually say one of, one of the best examples I've seen in our industry is not the ripple decision of last year, which I hope um, provides finally structuring guidance in the U.S., but the earlier ripple decision, which is the 2015 FinCEN action against ripple. Now, no, FinCEN, uh, ripple didn't like. Colt, folks, let me, let me tell you who I think this guy is. I think that this guy is a guy named, I can't see his name here. But I think this guy's the same guy I've covered before. I think his name was Alan something, formerly of Homeland Security. Howard, maybe Alan Howard. I'll, I'll look him up. Listen to what he says. Um, provides finally structuring guidance in the U.S. But the earlier Ripple decision, which is the 2015 FinCEN action against Ripple. Now, no, FinCEN, uh, Ripple didn't like that. And the industry didn't like that. But... Um, but it had the impact of growing today's compliance and uh, 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 industry that are that the digital asset industry is using to advance into institutional adoption, to advance into new products. Um, and it's an example of where regula- I think regulatory action, even where painful, can have a salutary effect uh, in our environment. My apologies to uh, to Ripple for having to bring up that ugly episode of their past. Um, one thing that's particularly um, frustrating in the U.S. is the question about regulatory fragmentation and harmonization. There's much more, we're much more fragmented in, in, fragmented in the United States, and we seem to be moving in somewhat different directions than what seems to be more of an emerging consensus outside the U.S., even across a variety of jurisdictions. Um, now, maybe, maybe you want to start on like, what, what's the, the, the impact, impact of that on innovation? All right, great clip there. Um, Ripple had put out this uh, uh, report yesterday. It was an, a blog uh, report talking about the four key elements that will serve as the foundation for success for a tokenized economy. One, liquidity, on off ramps, custody, compliance. Ripple's checked all the boxes, folks. It's just a matter of time now. Okay, in DAIXRP.com, you've heard me many times talk about how I thought that when I first saw digital assets, that somehow this was how they were going to roll this disastrous fiat debt-based economy, collapse it into a new digital economy. And for the first time, I'm going to show in the group, I'm going to show you exactly how they're going to do it. Now, I've teased around how they're going to do it, and I'll show you part of that in there. But I'm going to show you what I think is exactly how they're going to do it. And, and, and I think that when they do do it, there will be many, many people that didn't see all this coming. Will They'll, they'll be okay, maybe. But they're not gonna they're, they're not gonna thrive the way that those of us that spotted this did. How will have or will into the future? I, I don't believe. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. You want to know exactly how this is gonna happen? I'll show you. Daixrp.com. Here we go. <laughs> 